I'm Dr. Gerald Charkey, a urologist, and we are live here in an operating room at the Wheeling Hospital, the Schiffler Cancer Center. We're going to view a live procedure of brachytherapy so that patients who are considering brachytherapy as an option will see exactly what they're going to be going through so that patients can learn what a minimally invasive and effective uh, treatment it is. It's really just giving us the opportunity to have patients aware mm -hmm. that brachytherapy is a real option mm -hmm. right. and a real treatment that does equally or better, in my experience, mm -hmm. than surgery and radiation therapy. Right. What's happened this year for the first time is that prostate, uh, in the treatment of prostate cancer is the American Urologic Association, which are mainly urologists, have put brachytherapy up there with surgery and radiation therapy as one of the three standard options that has enough experience uh, and long-term results to show that it's equivalent or better as a, as a curing procedure and being minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we want to make the public aware and show them how minimally invasive it is and how you tolerate it, how you feel about it, how comfortable you are. How did you come upon choosing brachytherapy as, as the treatment of choice for yourself, as opposed to surgery or as opposed to radiation therapy? And my family doctor found that I had a uh, swelling on the, my prostate. Uh -huh. Is and that the it, lump? The lump, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he recommended me to a specialist, and I went to him, and he also decided that, that uh, I did have the cancer then. He did a biopsy on me. So then he recommended that I, I wanted to have it taken out, but he uh, recommended at my age to have the seeds implanted, uh -huh. and which I think is the best way to go. And, uh, and I leave tomorrow, I'm going out to Cincinnati to pick up my other trailer. Okay. So my tractor's out in the parking lot ready to go. Okay. So that's one thing. So, oh, and so you're going to go back to work next yeah. week? Yeah. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes, sir. Well, that's wonderful. Yes, sir. That's what I like about this procedure. Yeah. Because with uh, the surgery, they said it was going to be six weeks right. uh, before I could do anything. Right. And, and I can't sit still that right. long. <laughs> and do you realize with radiation therapy, you'd be going every day for almost eight weeks? Yes, yeah. Yeah. That, and that'd be tied up quite and, a bit. Uh, and you'd feel a little bit more tired and probably uh, yeah. would prevent you from working. Right, right. Could you tell me why you chose to allow your procedure to be videotaped? If there's anybody out there that, as they view this, decide that uh, that's the way they should go, and if I can save one man's life, boy, this is well worthwhile doing. Mr. Merrick, how are you? Hey, yeah. We're relaxed. You're going to do great. We're ready to roll. Um, we're going to begin the case by recapturing the ultrasound images at five millimeter increments. Um, we'll then do uh, real-time dosimetry here with uh, Brian Kirko and Rick Anderson, our two physics people in the OR. Uh, I will do a urethrogram to further identify the apex and we'll save that image uh, on flora. Uh, I then will implant the anterior apex. I then always implant the seminal vesicles. Once we begin that, we'll place all of the peripheral seeds. So we implant everything around uh, the outside of the gland. I do not put any central needles in because then I'll decide where we're going to place seeds in the interior part of the gland. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll do some dose painting at the end. So that'll, that'll complete the case. This gentleman will then go to recovery. And okay, what we're going to do now is that we're going to capture these images. So this grid here corresponds to the grid on the ultrasound screen right. okay. and what we're going to do now is I'm going to implant the apex yeah. laterally. Uh, this is going to implant the right anterior apex. Here's the apex. Here's the bevel of the needle. You can see it flashing now. And we're going to drop a single seed there. At this point we're going to implant the seminal vesicles. And each needle has how many seeds in well, it? These each have two. And when I implant the vesicles, I always put two back-to-back -back seeds. There are no spacers. And I'm implanting these proximal vesicles. 
And of course, if a gentleman had a high risk, you know, we would put as probably as many as 14 seeds into the vesicle. But now we're going to begin the real part of the implant. So we find it the mid gland, this goes to the base. Here's my needle. I've advanced it to the base. Uh, you can see the bevel again. Now that last needle, compared to where it was planted, I moved it two or three millimeters. I'm going to do the same to this. Why? Uh, because it's, uh, I don't want to place it too far anterior here because I think we're going to lose those um, in the um, vascular structures anterior to the gland. So these are going to be more right at the capsule. So we form this, you're going to start to see we form a hat uh, as we do the peripheral. So this is the fifth plan needle we put in. Two of the needles have been exactly where they were pre-planned. The other three we have slightly altered. So there we found it mid-gland. We'll go toward the base. Uh, we wouldn't go all the way to the base because we're going to try not to puncture the bladder wall. So these seeds here laterally are outside of the gland. And as you can see, we're not making any major changes to the pre-plant, but the vast majority of these needles are moved to some extent to um, conform to what I see intraoperatively to give us the best distribution. So if we look here now, we can see the dose distribution as we have this nice, what I always call a hat. We're putting a hat on the guy. Uh, and that's where we stand now. And we'll, we'll pay much more attention to that as we do all the periphery. So we're continuing to go around the periphery of the gland. The posterior part of the gland is a real key part of the gland for a couple of reasons. We do know there's a lot of cancer that will be in the posterior, but we also know that's where the rectum is. And we surely don't want any rectal morbidity. And rectal morbidity can occur with all procedures, including radical prostatectomy, external bean, cryotherapy, breaking therapy. And when you talk about morbidity, you're talking about side effects. You're exactly right. And there's the apex, there's the rectal wall, we're still within the prostate. So now what we're going to do is that we're now going to start placing our central needle. And we never place these where they were planned. Do you find that the more needles you have in, the more fixed the gland remains? Yeah, as the gland becomes more edematous. Of course, bigger glands are, are more fixed than others. What can the patient expect the next few days? Actually, uh, the one thing that is, was very surprising when we began is there's virtually no pain associated with this. Tomorrow, he'll return to all normal activities. Uh, he'll be driving, walking, uh, want no heavy lifting or straining for about five days. Um, and on day five, he could return to, you know, swinging a golf club, digging a ditch or whatever. I just don't want to stir up any bleeding. And that's probably overkill to wait five days. Uh, so we're coming down. Implant's starting to look pretty nice now. If, if you look at the screen here, we have a cold spot at the apex. So I'm going to come back and put a couple extra seeds. So this is an extra seed. And this is a seed that we're dose painting with. We want to make sure that we're getting good hot doses. So now we'll see what we get at 150% of the dose. Uh, here you can see the 20,000 just curves out around the urethra, but we still with the urethra have about 115 to 120% of the dose. Come down. Uh, again, this is basically 150% with sparing of the rectum, come on, and sparing of the urethra. So I'm very pleased, and uh, this gentleman should have an outstanding prognosis. Let's turn on the lights. Part of the, of the beauty of this procedure is that we're able to look at implant quality before we leave the OR. You cannot do that with a radical product detection. You don't know whether your margins are positive or negative until a few days later. But we've actually ensured that this gentleman has a good implant and he's still under, he's still sleeping. No seed, no bladder tumors. Looks great. Here comes the crew, man. Oh, here comes the crew. Yeah. But he, again, he did remarkably well. It was very uneventful. The distribution of the seeds looks great. My colleague, as you know, looked into the bladder afterwards. He had everything there look clear. So very, very smooth. And most importantly, his long-term prognosis is outstanding. Hi, Gene. Hi, Mr. Sharkey. It's uh, nice to see you. Do you have any pain? No, no, not so whatsoever. If I can save one man's life by uh, viewing this and decide that this is the way to go, why it's well worth it.